Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Clifton Webb in Cheaper by the Dozen. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeler. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A few moments ago, I finished my day's work out at Warner Brothers Studio, where I'm making a picture involving three babies, aged one month, three months, and six months. All of which I mention because I now have a slight idea of what the husband and wife in tonight's play must have thought when they decided to have 12 children. I imagine almost anyone who grew up in a family of 12 children would have enough material to write a book. And that's just what Frank Gilbert, Jr. and Ernestine Gilbert Carey did, producing a best-selling novel and our play for tonight, Cheaper by the Dozen. Of course, it takes quite a talented actor to play the role of father to 12 children, so naturally 20th Century Fox cast Clifton Webb in the part. And we, too, are delighted to star the very sophisticated Mr. Webb in this charming family story tonight. As you will discover in our play, it takes efficiency and careful management to rear a dozen children. And, of course, we recommend Lux Flakes. And now you'll discover Lux Flakes are even more wonderful when you try the new Lux with color freshener. Now the curtain rises on Cheaper by the Dozen, starring Clifton Webb as Frank Gilbert. <laughs> This is the story of my family. But first and foremost, the story of my father and my mother. Dad, Frank Bunker Gilbreth, was an industrial engineer, an efficiency expert, a man who showed industry how to save time. In Dad's mind, efficiency, like charity, began at home. For example, when he'd come home at night, as often as not, he'd announce himself by the blast of a whistle which he carried in his pocket. Bringing us on the gallop from all corners of the house and neighborhood. Hello, live bait. All right, all right, places. Come on, places. Get in line. Get in line. Mm hmm. 18 seconds of a stopwatch. Not bad, not bad, but I still say we should make it in less. All right, fall out, fall out. You'll find some chocolate bars there in my briefcase. Oh, boy! I might mention that there were 11 of us then, 11 children. That was the summer that we moved from Rhode Island to Montclair, New Jersey. We made the trip by automobile, a tremendous touring car known to all of us as Foolish Carriage. Red, Martha, hurry up there. Come on, come on, climb aboard. Foolish Carriage is getting restless. Hey, listen, are those kids yours, or is that a picnic? They're all mine, and believe me, it's no picnic. <laughs> Who's holding us up? Come on there, Bill. Make it snap it. <gasps> Mercy, Ma. Oh, sorry, Lily. Ha, 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 ha. Scared you, didn't I, son? I'll bet you jumped six and nine-tenths inches. Gee, Dad. It's all right, dear. I was scared, too. Teach you to keep your eyes open, young man. Well, everybody in? Anne, Ernestine, Martha, Mary, Frank? All present and accounted for, Dad. Very well. If you're all reasonably sanitary, let's go. Oh, my God! Goodbye, Rhode Island, New Jersey. Here we come. We were all quite accustomed to being an object of considerable curiosity to strangers. But Dad always had an answer for those bold enough to assail his dignity. Hey, Noah! What are you doing with that ark? Collecting animals like the good Lord told me, brother. All I need now is a jackass. Hop in. <laughs> Uh, all right, come on, kids. Let's have a song. I'll start it. <clears throat> when you wore a tulip, a big yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose. <laughs> No 
automobile, not even foolish carriage, could be expected to bear the demands we placed upon it without complaint. We were well out in the country when the radiator started steaming like a volcano. Oh, it's that fan bell again. Excuse me, Lily, I'll, I'll have to get out. Frank, it's not going to blow up again, is it? No, no, of course not. It won't take a minute to fix it. Now, incidentally, uh, now is a good time if any of you kids want to go see Mrs. Murphy. Well, how about it? All right, all right, but remember, this is your last chance. I can't understand why a good car like this should keep acting up. It's not one thing, it's another. Last week it was a carburetor. The week before that it was a fuel. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Who blew that horn? <laughs> that was a good joke on you, Dad. Young man, there's a time and place for jokes and a time and place for spankings. Mercy, Maud Frank, I'll bet you jumped six and nine tenth inches. Hmm? Mm. Oh. <laughs> You're right, son. That was a good joke on me. By jingo, I'll bet I did jump six and nine-tenths inches. <laughs> Would have done better than that if I hadn't hit my head in the hood. <laughs> oh, these kids, Lily, these kids. At long last, our faithful, foolish carriage entered the town of Montclair. It was a wonderful new house, and from the very first moment, we loved living in it. But we soon found out that while it was often too small for 11 children, it was more often too large for two servants. Mother and Dad met the problem in the typical Gilbreth manner. Head off. The family council will please come to order. Thank you. Now, it's obvious that this house is too big for Mrs. Monaghan and Jim Bracken to take care of without help. Therefore, your mother and I have called this meeting to discuss house and yard work. Oh, no. Assignments will be made on the basis of personal choice and aptitude. Now, does the chair hear any suggestions? Come on, come on. This is a democracy, you know. Everybody has an equal voice. You children are certainly very quiet all of a sudden. In a democracy, everybody speaks. So by jingo, start speaking. Bill, I recognize you. I don't want to be recognized. He's... Besides, I think Mrs. Monahan and Jim Bracken ought to do the work. They get paid for it. Sit down. You're no longer recognized. But in a democracy... Mr. Chairman. Yes, Frank? Speak up, son. Well, I think you're right. Jim and Mrs. Monahan have too much work to do. Thank you. I move we hire more people to work for. Second the motion. Yes. Yes. You're all out of order. Sit down, sit down, and be quiet. I, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, <clears throat> the chair recognizes the assistant chairman. Well, of course, we could hire additional help. Yes! Yes. Yes, if we did away with all desserts and weekly allowances, we might be able to afford a maid. Mm -hmm. And if we cut out movies, ice cream, and new clothes, we might be able to afford a help of a gym, too. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Well, Bill, Frank, Ann? Oh, well, I move we allot the work. Splendid. Do I hear a second? Second the motion. All those in favor signify by... Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Now, that brings up a little matter of specific assignments. For instance, the back fence is badly in need of whitewashing. Now, do I hear any bids? Well, speak up if you want to earn a little extra spending money. Yes, Bill? I'll bid ten dollars. You must think this is a government project. <laughs> do I hear any reasonable bids? Uh, uh, I bid 47 cents. 47 cents? Please let me do it, Daddy. But tell me, Lillian... How did you happen to hit upon 47 cents? I've been saving for a new pair of roller skates, and that's how much more I need. But you're going to get skates for your birthday. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, Lily. I wasn't supposed to let that out of the bag. Oh, Daddy, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, oh, besides, you. that's too big a job for a little girl like you. Frank, here's your chance. What do you bid? Uh, within reason. Oh, well, 250 I guess. Good. You got yourself a contract. Now, is there any more business? This family ought to buy a dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out of order, out of order. Meeting adjourned. But gee, all I said was... Doll. And in a democracy... Sorry, motion shell to the next meeting. All right. Oh, well, come on. Before we knew it, the new school term began. Early that Monday morning, Dad blew his whistle and piled the older seven of us into foolish carriage. Ten minutes later, we stood outside... 
Well, here we are, children. Come on now. I know you're very eager to get registered, so in you go. Come on, quickly now. Hurry up. Let's go. But, Dad, not all of us. Certainly all of you. You want us to make an impression, don't you? But this isn't our school. Ernestine and I are going to high school. We'll take care of that later. I want to show these people first what a real family looks like. But, Daddy, it's... Well, it's so embarrassing. A person with inner dignity is never embarrassed. Besides, visits like, visits like this get results. I only wish I had time to go home for your mother and the babies. I will, too, unless you get a move on. Honestly, Dad, you have more gall. Somebody in this family has to show a little spunk. Now hold your heads up and look alive. No dying cow looks. Come on, open the door, do you? Door, boys, and take your hats off. Come in, won't you? I'm the school principal. Uh, good morning, madam. Just a Gilbert invasion, or perhaps I should say a partial invasion, since I left most of them at home with their mother. I hope we're not intruding. Oh, oh, not at all. I'm delighted to see you, Mr. Gilbert. We've heard so much about you and Mrs. Gilbert. I understand you have... Eleven children, madam. Eleven children? Goodness, how do you feed them all? Oh, they come cheaper by the dozen, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, only five will be under your excellent supervision. Mary, Martha, Lillian, Bill, and Frank, Jr., how do you do, children? Oh, I'm very pleased. I just brought along my older girls, Anne and Ernestine, so you could get a better idea of the crop we're raising. Well, it's been so nice of you to drop by, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, I'm not just dropping by. No, no, I want to meet their teachers. Well, I'm afraid all our teachers are busy at the moment. Opening day... And... Oh, I'm in no hurry, no hurry at all. I've arranged my schedule so as to give you my entire morning. You... you have? Yeah. Meanwhile, as to their grades... I see no reason why my children should be held back by a school system geared to those of simply normal mentality. Well, no, of course not. But so much depends upon their ages and their... You very... mean mental ages, of course. Bill, how old are you, son? Eight. What grade does an eight-year-old usually belong in? The third grade. Then I think you'd better find room for Bill in the fifth. Oh, that's impossible, Mr. Gilbert. Perhaps later on, if he takes tests... Oh, I they... hope they'll all take a lot of tests. It's good for them. Meanwhile, uh, to illustrate my point, Frank, what's 46 times 83? 3,818. Lillian, 19 times 91. Um, um, 1,729. Bill, 52 times 52. Um, 2,704. Good gracious. Now, would you care to suggest any large numbers, madam? I'll take your word for it, Mr. Gilbert. I'll see what I can do. As usual, Dad won his point, and opening day or not, the principal sent for the teachers. While we were waiting, Dad lost no opportunity to impress her with our brilliance. And now you may be interested to hear something of the home training program their mother and I have worked out for the children. Oh, yes, indeed. I, I understand Mrs. Gilbert is quite a celebrated psychologist and consultant herself. She is indeed, madam, to say nothing of her obvious prowess as a wife and mother. <laughs> Now then, our home study program includes spelling games, geography quizzes, and languages. We're learning French and German from the phonograph. And Dad's even taught us how to take a scientific bath in the time it takes to play just one record. Really? A simple matter of coordination, madam, like any other physical effort. But how do you do it? Well, <laughs> this uh, seems hardly the time and place to... Oh, this uh... sounds perfectly fascinating. Yeah, go on, Dad, sure. Well, it's really very simple, madam. Now, if I may be seated on the floor by way of illustration. Oh, oh, yes, mm, yes. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> uh, first you take the soap in your right hand, thusly, and apply it to the left shoulder, running it down the top of the left arm, up the inside of the left arm to the armpit. Then both ears, like this, both of them, madam, not forgetting the back of the neck, then down the outside of the left leg, back up the inside of the left leg, then down the right leg and up. You will now observe that having reached my hip without lost motion, I quickly transfer the soap to the left hand, repeating the process on the right arm and right shoulder. Now, this is followed by a couple of circular motions in the midsection and the back with some special attention to the feet. <laughs> then you slide under for a rinse and rise from the bathtub bathed. Why, that, that's wonderful. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> but you appear to have callers, madam. What? Oh, oh, come in, ladies. Our teachers, Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert was just showing me how to take a bath. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Come on in. The water's fine. In our family, sickness was taboo. 
Dr. Burton's car in front of our house could mean only one thing. Dad, get back. Where is it? Where's the baby? In a room, taking your nap, of course. We mean the latest model, Daddy. Is it a boy or a girl? What are we going to name this one, Daddy? Lily, what's got into these children? I can't imagine, dear. Now, whatever gave you the idea there was a new baby? Dr. Burton's car's out front. And you were sick last night, weren't you? Why, a slight headache, yes. And every time you're sick, there's always a baby, isn't there? <laughs> Mercy, Maud, babies don't come just because you're sick. They've always come before when you were sick. Dr. Burton's upstairs because he's afraid Jackie and Mary have the whooping cough. Oh, is that all? Mm -hmm. Which means you children will have to stay away from them. As for babies, I think it's about time <laughs> we had a little... <laughs> oh, Bill, no, don't tell me you're getting it. <laughs> Stop that at oh. once, William. I'm not going to have an epidemic in this house. We haven't time for any such nonsense. You children have been given good health, and by jingo, it's your job to keep it. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we <laughs> get him up to the doctor. Come along, dear, Bill. Come along. Well, Lillian, we'll show them there's at least two in the house who won't get the whooping cough, won't we? You bet, Daddy. You and me, huh? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, these kids. These kids. <laughs> All caught it, of course. And the upstairs took on the antiseptic aspects of a hospital ward, with Mother fluttering from bed to bed, full of love and reassurance. And remember to keep covered, Martha. And put this jacket around your shoulders, dear. Oh, thank you, Mother. I'll go downstairs now and get your desserts. Then I'll read to you, if you like. May I come in? Oh, of course, dear. I won't disturb anything. I... It's all right. The children have missed you so. <laughs> Mike! <laughs> Oh, oh, I'll be all right, Lily. Oh, oh. I'll be all right, Lily. In heaven's name, what is it now? He's coughing too, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, me, how did I ever get mixed up with this family? All right, let me hear you cough. Oh, there's nothing the matter with me. <laughs> I was only joking. Huh? You were what? Well, it just wasn't any fun downstairs by myself, Lily. I wanted to be up here with the rest of the family. Very, very amusing. Oh, I give up. I'm sorry, Lily, but all that quiet down there makes me nervous. Really? Well, tell me, Doc. How are my Mongolians coming along? Uh, well, Liv... In spite of you, you old veterinarian. <clears throat> Gilbert, I'll say one thing for you. Your children don't get sick very often, but when they do, they certainly mess up the public health statistics of the state of New Jersey. <laughs> How's that, Mr. Bone? <clears throat> Ordinarily, I have a couple of cases of whooping cough or measles a week. When I have to report 11 cases in a single day, they're liable to quarantine the whole town of Montclair and close every school in Essex County. Well, at least these are only light cases. Ha <laughs> ha, pioneer stuff, you know. Yeah, is that so? Uh, by the way, those kids have tonsils, really ugly ones. As soon as they're over this cough, they ought to come out. Nonsense. I've never had mine out. Well, maybe you should have. Let's have a look at it. No, them. you don't. No, you don't. My tonsils are sound as a dollar. Sit down and open that mouth. What's the point of all of this? If you've got to talk, say, ah. Ah. Uh. I might have known. You're crazy. I've never been sick a day in my life. Well, then keep them if you want to. But the children's tonsils have got to come out. All but one. Martha's. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, I'm thinking of, about their tonsils. Could we do it here in the house? What's wrong with the hospital? Nothing, nothing. But uh, if we could rig up an operating room, I could take motion pictures and study what you doctors are doing wrong. Now, just a minute. Then I'd be able to show how you could eliminate a lot of waste motion and speed things up. Your methods may work out fine in factories, Gilbert, but as far as a hospital... Lily, we're going to have the children's tonsils out. I've made up my mind. Oh, Frank, do we have to? Mm, that's what this fellow here says. It's all right, Lily. I'm going to take movies. Of the operation? Certainly. No telling how many lives this sort of story will help save. Huh. Besides, if it makes you feel any better, I'll, I'll let this old butcher yank mine out, too. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, Frank, don't you think oh, we oh, ought to... Oh, stop him. Let him go ahead and cut his own throat. That's one part of the festivities I might even enjoy. Will you stop drooling? By jingle, this may make you famous, you old quack. <laughs>
just a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Cheaper by the Dozen. Here's Mr. Keeley, our producer. Act Two of Cheaper by the Dozen, starring Clifton Webb as Frank Gilbert. <laughs> For weeks afterward, Father's favorite topic was the impending series of tonsillectomies and the great gift he was about to make to medical science by means of the motion pictures. But as much as we loved movies, this was one epic we'd have been delighted to pass up. There wasn't a chance. All too soon, the memorable morning arrived. Dr. Burton had settled on the dining room for the scene of the operation. And there, Dad installed his motion picture equipment including a cameraman named Mr. Higgins. Mr. Higgins, however, failed dismally to share Dad's enthusiasm for the proceedings. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Gilbert. I hadn't figured on all this here ether. It's... it's my stomach. I, I don't feel so good. Higgins, I'm not interested in your internal organs. <laughs> Just get that camera ready. Oh, yes, sir. My brother Bill was the first to go. The rest of us waited in the living room in a quiet huddle. Only one of us, Martha, would be spared. Of all the Gilbreth tonsils, hers alone would remain undisturbed. Gee, I heard you poor kids couldn't have any breakfast this morning. How sad. <laughs> How very sad. Oh, cut it out, will you, Martha? Everybody knows you can't eat before you get operated on. I had donuts for breakfast. Mmm, delicious. Oh, and a big piece of apple pie left over from last night. Oh, you beast, get out of here. Mother, make Martha stop gloating about her breakfast. And not another word about food, Martha. Do you understand? I'm sorry, Mother. I won't even mention donuts and apple pie again. Well, Lily, number one's finished. We just brought Bill upstairs. Oh, that poor boy. I'd better go right up to him. Slept through it just like a baby. I can't wait to see those movies. Come on, Ernestine girl. You're next. Don't be afraid, dear. It'll all be over in just a few minutes. Oh, I'm not afraid. Much. A Gilbert afraid? Don't be ridiculous. I just remember I'll be right there with you, dear. Well, goodbye, all. Goodbye. All right, girlie. Let's hop right up here on the table. Is it going to hurt me, Dr. Burton? At your age? Why, you won't even feel it. My exact words, doctor. All right, nurse. Better help her there. Hey, Mr. Gilbert. Higgins, uh, <laughs> how about changing the lens for this one? I want to see exactly how his caddy hands him his knives. Ain't it kind of hot in here, Mr. Gilbert? Or maybe if we open the window... You want my child to get pneumonia? Yes, but this ether... Never mind the ether. Just take care of that camera. Now then, nurse. You'll just... Good heavens. What is it? What have you done now? What have I done? I told you I didn't want Martha. You haven't got Martha. That's Ernestine. You sure? Of course I'm sure, you jackass. Now, look carefully. Don't you suppose I know my own children? I tell you, that's Ernestine. Well, if she isn't Martha, we've made a horrible mistake. We? What do you mean, we? What kind of a mistake? Well, all I know them by is their throats. I thought these tonsils were Martha's. They're the only ones that didn't have to come out. You knocked my little girl unconscious for no reason at all? <laughs> well, what do we do now? Oh, take them out anyhow. They'll have to come out eventually. <laughs> now, go in there and get Martha ready. But she's been eating all morning. Well, never mind. I'm not going through another day like this. Start grinding, Mr. Higgins. At least we'll salvage something. Poor Martha. It was a blow, but in she went, full of pie, donuts, and indignation. I don't care if it is, Dr. Burton. No, fault. Lily. Letting Lily. her eat that huge breakfast only to be snatched up like that and, and butchered. Lily, I told you, it's no worse than a mosquito bite. Oh. Higgins, keep grinding in there. Mosquito bite, indeed. Very well. Just to prove it to you, I'll go next. What? I thought you wanted to supervise your movie. Oh, I intend to. I shall take only a local anesthetic. <laughs> that way I won't miss a trick. And Dr. Burton's agreed. Oh, that's a lot of nonsense about my physical condition. Burton. <laughs> I'll be in the amen corner when they're laying him away. <laughs> Besides, I want to get this over with before lunch. I'm starved. All right, Gilbert. Who's next? I am. Okay, then make it snappy. A man can just stand so much. Well, I hope you're not making a mistake, dear. All right, sharpen up your tools there, Mr. Sawbones. Here I come. <laughs> yes, indeed. To Dad, a tonsillectomy was nothing. And he didn't miss a trick. Ten minutes later, he staggered out of the dining room, one hand groping before him, the other at his throat. Oh, Louie. Louie. Where are you? 
Oh, I hope my hope is wrong. Oh. <laughs> yes, dear, I know. But that thing, that, that thing, that, 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 I can't talk, I can't talk. All right, old pioneer. You just had to have it the hard way, didn't you? Lily, I'm dying, I'm dying, Lily. <laughs> oh, Lily, really? uh, Sit down, sit down, old timer. I'll give you something to make you sleep. How am I going to sleep when my throat's cut? <laughs> Mr. Gilbert! Mr. Gilbert! Go away, Higgins, go away. Oh, I hate to tell you this, but it looks like none of the picture will be any good. No, good? <laughs> I forgot to put the film in the camera. <laughs> yes. You what? Now, Frank. Frank, don't get excited. Let me out of 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 Let me out Let me out of Let me out of Let From that day on, tonsils was a subject we just didn't talk about in front of Father. One afternoon, he came home early. We children were in the living room undergoing our weekly music lesson. What brought it to you? Well, dear? I had a letter today, Lily, from Dr. Blenheim. You remember him, Czechoslovakia? Frank, they want you to come. Well, it's not definite, but Blenheim thinks they'll ask me to speak at the International Management Conference in Prague. I knew they would. I knew they would. The best scientific minds in the world, Lily. Oh, and what an opportunity, darling, to have your methods recognized universally. Yes, it's what I've always hoped for. <laughs> but if it hadn't been for you, Lily, your help... Will you tell the children tonight? You can tell them if you want to. I won't be here, dear. Won't be here? Have you forgotten? I have a date at the hospital. So soon? Mm, I'm afraid so. But I thought you were only joking about going to the hospital. After all, you never went to one before just to have a baby. Well, maybe I never thought about it before. Well, it's going to be awfully lonely around here without you, Lily. By the way... Do you mind what it is? Well, I thought we'd already agreed it would be a boy. After all, we have six girls. But, of course, anything you decide will be all right with me, Lily. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Thank you, Lily. That night, our baby brother was born. And for the twelfth time, Dad's verdict was exactly the same. Well, Lily, I'll say this much for him. Mm, he's every inch of Gilbert. I'm glad you approve. Yes, I expect we'd better keep him, too. Look at you. What? You were the one who was so afraid he'd be the last of the Gilbert. Well, I admit you had me worried there for a while, Lily. Four girls in a row, well, that can be pretty nerve-wracking. Of course, you know I did it deliberately. <sighs> Twelve children, Lily, an even dozen. And hardly an idiot in the bunch. <laughs> you set the actual target, dear. Six boys and six girls. I believe you even made a memorandum of him. Hmm, sounds kind of silly now, doesn't it? Not half as silly as it did then. Honestly, dear, did you really think we'd be able to go through with it? Why, certainly. I always knew that anything you and I teamed up on would be a success. <laughs> Seemed kind of funny, won't it? For the first time in 17 years, we'll be able to go to bed without setting the alarm clock for a 2 o'clock feeding. Yes, it's certainly going to be a luxury, isn't it? A wonderful luxury, but I'll hate it. Now, give me my baby. I've just one thing to say to you, young man. She's a pretty wonderful woman. Anyway, that's one man's opinion. Mother and our baby brother Robert came home, and it was home once again. There was no further news about Dad's trip to Czechoslovakia, so that summer, as usual, we went to the beach at Nantucket. Dad had certain fixed ideas about the ocean, mainly that it was intended for bathing, regardless of the temperature. Come on, slow folks. Hurry up. Last one in is Kaiser Bill. Oh, Mother, must we go in? It's freezing. You should know by now, Ernestine, how your father feels about the primitive life. Oh, well, then, let's go in and get it over with. You'd think Dad invented this ocean. You'd think he... Ernestine, look. 
That's Tom. Tom Black from high school. Look, he's a lifeguard. But what's he doing here at Nantucket? Well, he has to keep in condition for swimming somewhere, doesn't he? Oh, but why did he have to pick this place? And he's playing the ukulele. And look at all those girls around him. Come on, let's stroll by and see what happens. I should say not. Well, we know him, don't we? We see him at school, don't we? Yes, we see him, but he doesn't even know I... We exist. Besides, here comes Dan. Hurry up, girls. Good dip in the ocean. Never hurt anybody. You better rest for a while, Frank. You know what Dr. Burton said. That quack? <laughs> My heart's as good as his any day. Better. Here we go, young ladies. Come on now. None of this nonsense about... Dad, what is it? Just look at them. Those girls with that ukulele player. Daddy, you're staring. A fine spectacle. Bobbed hair, rolled stockings, and painted knees. But, Dad, that's the way everybody dresses at the beach. Everybody but Ernestine and me. We're just, just freaks. Freaks or not, you're not going down around here with bare knees for all the boys to ogle. Not while I'm alive. Well, boys don't ogle when everybody dresses that way. Don't tell me what boys ogle. I was young once myself. <laughs> Honestly, Dad, how do you ever expect us to be popular? Popular, popular. That's all I hear. That's the magic word, isn't it? That's what's the matter with this generation. <laughs> Nobody thinks about being smart or clever. No, sir, they just want to be popular. But, Dad, if you'd only be reasonable... For the last time, no. You may not roll your stockings on the beach. <laughs> Other girls want to go to the devil, that's their business. But you're not going with them. Is that clear? It ought to be. We've heard it often enough. Now, look here. You want to get married someday, don't you? Well, nice girls don't marry men, and nice men don't marry girls who make themselves cheap. You may run around with them before they're married, but... Well? When they settle down, they want someone they can respect. Well, they certainly respect me. I'm the most respectable girl I know. Why, well, they respect me so much they don't even look at me. Me either. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? Now, come along and get some of that good salt water. That afternoon, I made up my mind to revolt. I'd start from the top down. I took a pair of scissors and, and bobbed my head. And your hair... Oh, what have you done? Oh, Ernestine, believe me. I didn't do it just for myself. I cut off my hair for you and Martha and Mary and Lillian and Jane. Because I know you'll never be emancipated until I paved the way. Oh, Anne. Otherwise, we'll all go to our graves old maids. Still wearing cootie garages over our ears. <laughs> and long drawers. Oh, but, but that'll murder you. When are you going to show him? I'll be downstairs at dinner time. Now hand me that comb and help me trim the ends. Oh, your hair, Anne. Your beautiful hair. I had picked the worst possible moment for my revolt. Of course, I didn't know it at the time, but Dad had already received one blow, one that really hurt. When I went down for dinner, he and Mother were alone on the porch. The cablegram, Lily, from Dr. Benheim. It seems the management conference program is filled without me. Oh, Frank, really? Yes, then I'm still, he says he's still working on it, but not to count on it. I gather there's a general lack of interest. Well, there'll be other conferences. Frank, don't be too disappointed. Yes, I guess I was counting on it too much, mm -hmm. Lily. Well, let's go in and have dinner. There's only one thing I can count on, you and the children. The sweetest, the most obedient children who ever... Who... Frank, Frank, what is it, dear? Who is that? Who is that creature in there? Anne. Anne, your hair. Anne Gilbert, take off that ridiculous wig. It's not a wig. I, I've cut my hair. You what? You may kill me if you want to, but I've done it. I, I think it looks kind of snaky, Dad. Besides, it's ever so much more efficient. What? I'll bet she can fix her hair now in, in 15 seconds. Fix what hair? She hasn't any hair left to fix. <laughs> Oh, Anne, how could you do this to yourself? To herself? How could she do it to an Airedale? <laughs> well, I won't have it. I want to grow them back, young lady, and I want to grow them back fast. I'm not going to grow it back. I don't care what anybody says. I'm, I'm sick of being a freak. Anne? Anne, come back here. Let her go, dear. After all, it isn't such a tragedy. All the girls her age are bobbing their hair now. But I distinctly told She's her, Lily. She's growing up, Frank. She's no longer a child. Now, come and have dinner. But we started letting the children do as they please, please around here. Please, dear. 
for my sake? Well, all right, Lily. Fifteen seconds, hmm? I wonder if Ernestine knows what she's talking about. <laughs> By the time vacation was over, Dad was reconciled. My bobbed hair had been a bitter pill for him to swallow, but like all fathers, from the beginning of time, he gulped and swallowed it. Then one evening, in my bedroom... What was it, Ann? That package from the department store. Come on in, Daddy. You may as well know the worst. They, they're teddies, see? Lace teddies. They're what? I, I bought them with my own money, and I'm going to wear them. No, no, you're not. You're going to send them right back. Well, it embarrasses me even to look at them. Oh, but, Dad... You mean to tell me this is all the underwear women put on nowadays? Oh, please be sensible, Daddy. And you don't really mean I have to send them back. Not really, do you? Well, but uh, no silk stockings and high heel shoes. I'm not going to have a lot of doctor's bills because of foot trouble. Oh, thank you, Daddy. And while we're both in the mood... You may as well know it's a little late for that now. See? High heels. I've been wearing them ever since we came home from Nantucket. Hey, yeah, Joe boy. It's for you, Annie. It's a boy. A boy? Oh, excuse me, Dad. Better hurry up before it gets away. Come back here. I'm not saying you can wear those things. My own flesh and blood in high heels. <laughs> Who telephoned? Oh, Mother, I told you. I told you if I started dressing like other girls, everything would be all right. But who was it, dear? Joe. Joe Scales. He's asked me to go to the senior prom on Friday night. The prom, Mother. Who is Joe Scales? Is he nice? Oh, he comes from an awfully nice family. And he's he's cheerleader. He's got his own car, too. Two mighty fine recommendations. <laughs> what about a raccoon coat? Oh, well, he'll probably get that next year when he goes to college. Gee. <laughs> Come on, Ernestine. I've got to decide on what I'm going to wear. It's formal. Now, just a minute, young lady. Uh, Friday night, you say? Oh, yes. Uh, let me see. Friday night, yes. Yes, that's all right. I can make it. You can make what? The dance, of course. Dad, you don't mean... You didn't think I was going to let you go out by yourself with a cheerleader, did you? Oh, Daddy, you wouldn't spoil everything by doing a thing like that, would you? What'll he think of me? That you're a sensible, well-brought-up child with sensible parents. Oh, honestly, Dad, don't you even trust your own daughter? I trust all my daughters. It's that cheerleader I don't trust. <laughs> oh, no. Now make up your mind. Either I go or you don't. Yes, Father... Oh! KNX 1070 News Radio. The curtain rises on Act Three of Cheaper by the Dozen, starring Clifton Webb as Frank Gilbreth, with Rhoda Williams as Anne, and Betty Lou Gerson as Mother. Friday night arrived, and so did Joe Scales. Now, Joe was no Rudolph Valentino, but he was a boy, and he was taking me, us, to the senior prom. Joe made quite an impression on my brothers and sisters. Rah, rah, rah! Rah, rah, rah! Like the high school! Rah, rah, rah! Hey, not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, you kids ever see a William Tell tie? Oh, yeah. Okay, now watch. You pull the bow and it hits the apple. Get it? It hits the apple. The Adam's apple. <laughs> Great Caesar's ghost, Lily. It's Joe College in the flesh. Oh, not so loud, dear. I think he's kind of cute. Cute? He looks like what might happen if a pygmy married a bobtail penguin. Where's Anne? She just went up to get her wrap. Now, look, 
Dear, why don't you just stay home and have a nice quiet... Stay home? I said I was going, and I am. I know it's not your fault, Lily, but things would have been a lot easier if you'd taken my advice and had old boys. I'm sorry, dear. I'll try to be more careful with the next dozen. Daddy, where are you? We're ready. Coming, daughter, coming. All set, Pop? Okay, baby, let's shake that thing. So long, gang. Yeah, let's shake that thing. So long, gang. Come on, Joe. The tickets. The tickets. Oh, 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 here. What held you up so long? Kind of early to start Nick, and ain't it? Shh. Ixnay, Ixnay. Huh? Oh, excuse me, sir. Hmm. Well, what happened to the cheerleader? He, he's checking our wraps. Well, shall we sit down? Oh, don't you see, Dad? Everybody's talking. I can't even go to a dance alone. I don't know why boys even bother about me. Well, I know if you don't. And that's exactly why I'm here. <laughs> I haven't seen such ogling since we left Nantucket. All set, baby? Oh, oh, yes, Joe. Well, then come on. Let's give it the old hips. So long, Pop. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. A little later on, when the orchestra was taking a rest, I ran into Debbie Lancaster. Debbie was a senior. She used lipstick and had plans of going on the stage. Know something, honey? I just got to meet your daddy. I think he's the cutest man I ever saw. But he, he's kind of old-fashioned, Debbie. Then I'll just adore him, because I'm awfully old-fashioned myself. <laughs> Maybe it's because I was born in Mississippi. <laughs> you just got to be old-fashioned to be born in Mississippi. Well, come on, then. But be careful, won't you, Debbie? I mean, about your perfume and lipstick and everything. Now, don't worry, honey. My daddy's the same way, always carrying on about me. But I notice he don't carry on when it's someone else's job. I'd like you to meet Deborah Lancaster, Daddy. She's from Mississippi. How do you do? Oh, Mr. Gilbreth, I've just been hoping and hoping to meet you ever since you started visiting our school. Is that so? Well, 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 I'm delighted, delighted. <laughs> so you're from Mississippi, are you? Just a little old fugitive from a plantation. Mm hmm Hi. Oh. Hello, Debbie. Hello, honey. Oh, and darling, you know Tom Black, of course. <laughs> well, we ought to know each other by now. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. Dad, this is Tom Black. How do you do? Evening, Mr. Gilbert. Well, how about a dance, Anne? Me? Do you mind, Dad? Not at all, not at all. No, I'm sure this young lady and I will have a very pleasant time. I guess Joe won't like this, Anne, but, but I've been waiting for this chance ever since you got here. Say, say, what have you done to yourself? Nothing. What do you mean? Well, you sure didn't look like this last summer at Nantucket. How would you know how what I looked like? You never even noticed me. Well, I'm noticing you now, baby. And I mean... Please tell me you've just been revolutionizing industry, honey. Oh, I mean, Mr. Gilbreth. <laughs> just saving millions of dollars in time and things. Oh, well, I, uh... <laughs> I jingle, that perfume smells good. <laughs> like it? <laughs> the little boy Yale sent it to me. Uh, but I mean, what does anybody want to save all that time for, Mr. Gilbreth? Well, maybe for one thing, so as to be able to sit here and talk to a, a pretty little lady like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I declare. <laughs> and you're so good looking, too. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. <laughs> Other girls are just going to hate me if they don't get to meet you. Do you mind? Mind? Me mind? Why, no, not at all. Bring them over. Many as you like. Bring them on. Oh, thank you, sugar. I mean, oh, excuse me, Miss Gilbreth. Now, don't you go away. Hear me? I'll be right back. Hmm. Well, well, well. <laughs> Say, your old man sure is swell, Ann. Believe me, if I ever have a daughter, I'm sure going to watch her, too. You... You are? Uh, they're not going to catch me letting her run around by herself. But I, I mean, oh, oh, yes. A fellow likes to run around a little. 
sure. But when it comes to settling down, believe me, I want a girl I can respect. Well, that's funny. That's just what my father It sure said. makes you stop and think, all right. An important man like Mr. Gilbert, sitting there all by himself, not even dancing, just watching, watching. Tom, Tom, look. Hmm? My father over there, all alone, not even dancing. Holy cow, look at him, Charleston. Excuse me, Doc, may I cut in, please? Oh, certainly, Anne. I just love dancing with you, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you, young lady. Well, I hope you haven't been too lonely, Dad. No, no, I've managed. I didn't know you could dance. Mm, there's lots of things you don't know, young lady. Maybe you ought to congratulate me. What for? Well, after all, it isn't there every girl in Montclair High whose father can be Bella the Ball. Now, let's be honest. They're not really bad kids, are they? Mm, well... And you're not really going to tag along with me every time I go out, are you? Well, we'll decide that when I get back. After all, I won't be able to tag along when I'm in Europe. Europe? But I thought you weren't going. Oh, yes, yes, I am. Uh, I'm going to speak in London as well as in Prague. But when did all this happen? The invitation just came, a cable. Your mother sent Frank over with it not five minutes ago. Oh, Daddy, that's wonderful. Now, now, let's not get emotional. If you're going to toddle with me, young lady, by jingo, let's toddle. A few days later, we were all in the living room saying goodbye. Dad insisting on going to the station by himself. Gosh, Mom, why can't we go to the station with Daddy? Yeah, I want to see the train. When I get back, I'll show you lots of trains. I don't intend to start off for Europe ringing wet with tears. <laughs> You'd better hurry, dear. You don't have too much time. Boys, take your suitcases. Oh, sure, Mom. Okay, oh, on, your pills. What about your pills, Frank? Oh, Burton gave me enough to last a lifetime. This is for you, Dad. But don't open it up till you get on the boat. More socks? Well, who taught me how to knit in the first place? Okay, I plead guilty. Thank you, dear. Well, kids, let's get this over with. Goodbye, Dad. Bye. 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 Goodbye, Frank. Take good care of yourself. Don't worry about me. If anything comes up, you know where to cable me. Well, I'll take care of the work here. You just forget it. Enjoy yourself. I will. Well, kids, one more kiss, huh? Okay, Bye. Bye. Now, you behave yourselves. Do what your mother tells you. I'll be back in a couple of months. I'm going to miss you so much. A little more attention to the books, young lady, and a little less to that swimming champion, and you'll stand a better chance of getting into college, understand? I'll work on it, Dad. That's my girl. Well, goodbye, Lily. Goodbye, dearest. Have a good time. Bye, bye, bye. 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 So he left us. The telephone rang about 20 minutes later. It was Dad. He was at the station. He started to talk to Mother, and then... And then that was all. What happened is like a dream now, an evil dream. Mother rushing from the house, the neighbors finding my younger brothers and sisters and sending them home. Something had happened. He was dead. Our father was dead. Sit down. Children, please. Please sit down. I've called you older children together because I think you ought to know the situation. There isn't going to be a great deal of money. Most of it had to go back into father's business. Anyway, I... I just telephoned Grandmother in California. She wants us to move out there and live with her. If, if it's a matter of money, Mother, I plan not to go to college anyway. I'll get a job. I, I don't want to go to college either. Please, wait until I've finished. There is an alternative, but it hinges on your being able to take care of yourselves. I can go on with Father's work, keep the office open. That would mean we could stay here if... If we live very simply. Oh, and if things should work out, then Anne, you can go to college later on. Father wanted all of you to go to college. Oh, don't worry about that, Mother. Do you want to try? Can you run the house and look after things until I come back? Well, come back from where, Mother? I'm going to Europe. I'm going to give those speeches for Father. We all know how much they meant to him. I'm sure that's the way he'd want it. 
But as I say, the final decision is up to you. Oh, Mother, you don't have to ask us. You know we'll do anything as long as we can stay together. Thank you, dear. I knew that's the way you'd feel about it. Well, since I'm going to be planning the meals from now on, I, I guess I'd better get started. And, and I'll see that the house is kept nicely, Mother, just the way you like it. A and I'll help her. We all will. We'll do the errands, won't we, Frank? And keep the yard clean and... You bet we will. Oh, you've got a bigger job than that, Frank. Yes, Mother. Because from now on, you'll have to be the man of the family. We'll handle things, Mother. And we'll do a good job, too. You just wait and see. Yes, son, I know you will. Well, anyway, that's one man's opinion. <laughs> Yes, Dad. Yobreth and company will go on. Mother and your even dozen will see to that. Mother will go to Europe, and you'll be proud of the way she delivers those speeches for you. And she'll go right on following in your footsteps to become the foremost woman industrial engineer in the world, and by 1948, America's Woman of the Year. But wherever you are, Dad, somehow I'm sure you know that. And never doubted it for one moment. <laughs>